Welcome to the Celebrating Women podcast. Mandy Uncafer and Ashley Fisher dig into conversation about women, their issues, their thoughts, their lives, and celebrate their gifts, their talents, their courage. It's the Celebrating Women podcast. Presented by Hand in Stone Massage and Facial Spa in Tyler, Texas. Hey there, it's Mandy, and you know I've shared the secret of where I go to relax and unwind with you. It's Hand in Stone Massage and Facial Spa in Tyler. They've really become just an essential part of my self-care routine. I mean, I go monthly, sometimes even more frequently to get a massage. And, you know, I tried booking with somebody new recently, Drew. If you've never had a massage from Drew, I highly recommend it. It was a different experience for me. Most therapists tend to spend a lot of time in one area before moving on to the next place on your back or your shoulders. And so I told Drew I really wanted him to focus on my neck and shoulders. And so what I loved about his technique was he was on my neck and then he was on his shoulder and then he went back to my neck and then he moved to the other shoulder and then he was down my back and then he came back to my neck. And it really just that pattern of like pressure and relief really really made a difference. I know you want to go book with Drew now, don't you? Stop by Hand and Stone Massage and Facial Spa in Tyler, located in the Cumberland Shopping Center, or you can book online today at handandstonetyler.com. Welcome back to the Celebrating Women podcast. I'm Ashley Fisher. I'm Mandy Uncafer, and we have a special guest today. Hi, my name is Kathy Williams Bosley. And I'm here to talk about all kinds of crazy things. We're excited. <laughs> We're Y'all excited. get ready. Buckle up. <laughs> this is going to be fun. It's going to be energetic. There might be more topics covered in one podcast Possibly. than ever before. Possibly. Possibly. Okay. We're here for it. We are so here for it. Kathy and I have been friends for a long time. We met through my career in radio. Kathy's an entrepreneur at this phase of her life, and she came in as an advertiser. And for a while, I endorsed her amazing business, Close Mentor, here in Tyler. I still shop there a lot. It's fun. That's how we met. But Kathy Kathy is a pretty extraordinary person, and she has a lot to share. So she is so much more than an entrepreneur. Kathy, how would you introduce yourself? I wrote down three things I'm good at. That's great. Start there. So I would just say, if you're thinking of me, if I'm thinking of me, the words are overcomer, Mm -hmm. encourager, Mm -hmm. and organizer. Ooh, that's a good combination. And I don't just mean your drawers. I mean... (laughs) life. This is yeah. organized. This notebook yes. I have is organized. You're the first person to come in with notes. Really? Yeah. I think so. That's she's exciting. got a teacher background, which I love because I was a teacher and she's sitting here with her notes in her lap, very well organized. And it makes I even have a certain font. Happy. I don't know if y'all know, like, so you can write in <laughs> fonts, right? Yes. So I, first rabbit trail in high school, I had a pen pal and he had lived in Houston part of the time but he also lived in I think South Dakota and Minnesota and we were pen pals all the years and we actually reconnected recently on um what's it called LinkedIn Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah Yeah. so we we reconnected there and I've met he and his wife uh for lunch in Galveston he used to be the chief financial officer for Galveston County but his font the way he wrote his Mm -hmm. letters to me I copied it all those years I I mean I adopted it I didn't mean you know it became part of my font so when I do note taking I use what I call Brent Hartzell font oh so this is actually in Brent Hartzell font. Yeah. And I sent a picture and he showed it to his wife and she said, yep, that is your handwriting. I'll be darned. She mailed it. Um, but yes, I would say organizer. The reason I say not just your, your um, drawers is I noticed when my child, uh, my youngest was two, mini me, and she took all the crayons out of the box of 64 and put all the greens together and all the yellows and all the oranges. And I was like, she goes, this is how you do crayons, right, mommy? And I said, exactly how you do crayons. That's exactly right for us. Because I didn't know back at that age and all the years I was growing up how um, organized and color coordinated and everything needs to be in a place and how happy that would make me. So I do love to organize anything. Event, if you have an event, ask me to help organize it. If you have a whole house. Careful. And moving Careful, it. Kathy. <laughs> We Listen. have listeners who might be calling you. <laughs> Call you me better to put a organize. price tag on it. I actually was a professional organizer while I was home with my three Were children. You? Mm-hmm. That was one of my side gigs. Yeah, I have a lot of side gigs. You do have a That's lot of awesome. side gigs. Yes. So, yes, overcomer, encourager, organizer, I would say um, all three of those describe mm-hmm. me best. Well, what do you want to share today? Because I feel like you came in with a message since you have a lesson plan with you. Things were very challenging for me as a child. And not everybody gets to come out of that in an overcomer way. So I'm very blessed and by the grace of God, got to use that all for good for Mm -hmm. the most part. And so Mm -hmm. I would say that's where my origin point is. So I would say challenges in my childhood drew me into a very personal relationship with Jesus. He became my Abba father because my own physical father was out at that moment. (laughs) He checked out for a little bit Mm -hmm. um, of my life. I mean, he was existing and I knew him, but he wasn't in my home being a dad every day. 
Um, and unfortunately, yay, years later, AA and wonderful mm-hmm. um, reconciliation, recovery in our life. So very dear relationship with my father as an adult. But as a little girl, um, God is my Abba Father, and that makes such an impact on my whole life. I look back now, mm-hmm. um, I'm going to be 54 this August, and I look back and can see that was a huge blessing. As the hard things would come, the hard seasons, the hard times, I would have Him and that ultimate faith, and it would make me so strong in the hardest of seasons. Or more importantly, and this is a big thing you'll hear me talk about today, it made me feel safe to grieve and be scared and be sad and depressed and know that he was still there while I was walking through that process. Okay, I have a question. And it's so interesting that you're bringing this up because I had such a striking thought on my drive here this morning. And I I, I just told the Lord, I don't want to be a daughter who ever looks back when I'm holding your hand. And the thought was, I've got your hand, you've got me, I don't want to look back because I trust you. And then it hit me, I've always trusted you. It just, nobody had to tell me, it was just there. So I'm curious, is this something that you felt like you were taught or was it just always there? So I grew up in Houston, Texas, going to an Episcopal church, and I tell people I loved every minute of it. I loved church every Sunday. I wore the robes. I was in the choir, the junior choir, the big choir, the adult choir. I was an acolyte for, I think, 11 years. I went to uh, Episcopal church camp. I loved every facet of all of that because, again, at home, things are tough, but when I got to church, Mm -hmm. ooh, there's some good news there, right? So I would say all the years— we went every Sunday. That was mom took us every Sunday. Mom taking me to church every Sunday just set a tone for me that he was in my life. Mm-hmm. So then she gave me the New Testament, the book of John, written in the 70s, y'all. Like, <laughs> it's the hippest thing y'all have ever read. <laughs> it is straight out of Godspell and Jesus Christ Superstar. I know exactly where Andrew Lloyd Webber got his inspiration. It is groovy. And so, because I'm a kid in the 70s. So mm-hmm. in 1978, when I read it, when I'm about eight years old, I dig it. Like mm-hmm. I, I, he's my, he's there. Mm-hmm. And I have this, this, uh, yeah, he's always there. He's in the room and he's protecting me. And I needed that. I didn't end yeah. up having a pretty challenging childhood. It felt personal. Oh, very, very he was personal. right there. He was, yeah. he's my dad in the room. Yeah. So to grow up that way, very contrary to my father, my father's father was a pastor here in town mm-hmm. and he was a Baptist preacher. And it was not at all like that. It was a very mm-hmm. scary hellfire brimstone yelling, right. shake the podium, they yeah. would say about my grandfather, and demand that my father walk down the aisle and do certain things. So my father would literally, even to the day he dies at 69, sleep with the light on at yes. night um, many times. Not every night, but there were times he would have turned on the middle of the night out of just that fear factor. And over the years, again, wow. through his AA and his sobriety and healing and things I would share with him and things that he was able to not be so scared of God. But mm-hmm. definitely as a child, that was put in him in a very scary manner. I had the exact opposite. I mm-hmm. mean, couldn't be more opposite and felt so safe with him. Like you would say, he was always there and felt very close to him. I've talked to him. Not only do I talk to myself and, mm-hmm. and entertain <laughs> Thousands of audiences across the world in my mom's bedroom using my round brush as mm-hmm. my um, sp- as my microphone. So I've been a speaker to many, uh, probably millions, y'all. I've probably spoken to millions of invisible people across airwaves and things like that with my imagination. That easy to talk to the Lord mm-hmm. in my own room right. by myself scared. And in note, counseling here in Tyler for the last couple of years, I remember being in one of the hardest EMDR, we'll talk about that. EMDR moment, I mean, like snot on your face, yeah. crying, like it couldn't be any redder, you couldn't be crying any harder, huh. and no, you don't have to do that every time at EMDR, I was, it was a painful moment, and I wanted to work through it, not Good. be afraid of it, I Good. wanted to face it, overcome it, climb that mountain and go, and she said after, I said something about always being alone, she was, you were never alone, mm-hmm. as a little girl, you, you, you actually knew you had the Lord, so when we go back and go through this moment, Picture him there with yes. you. And anyway, so good yeah. stuff. I got some good mm-hmm. stuff. But yes, always been there with me. Always okay. comforting me. Yes, absolutely. And I will tell you, as a kid, I did. I wanted to move to New York. Um, I would say the papers start in high school. The research papers I would write were always about New York City. I was going to move there. I was going to live in Harlem. And that's before the the reinventing of Harlem that it yeah. is now. I was going to live there when it was the hood. Mm-hmm. I was going to live in Harlem and I was going to teach. So the movie Stand and Deliver had come mm-hmm. out and I was going to go do that. Yeah. I was going to go reach the hard to reach kids and 
get them to be creative, kind of mix in a little fame in there and make it just amazing. They were all going to succeed. And then I was going to dance on Broadway in the evenings. Of course. Um, so I mean, why not? I yeah. love that dream. <laughs> so that was I my love dream. that for you. Yeah. <laughs> that did not happen. So I do go to New York regularly and go to Broadway shows. And I taught for um, 20 years and got to do a little bit of that, make a difference in a kiddo's life and, yeah. and see that light bulb what come subject on. did you teach, Kathy? So because my minor in college was Spanish, for the most part, I have either taught bilingual children mm. to, to learn English, mm-hmm. or I've taught English-speaking children Spanish. That's awesome. That's a huge part of it. Yeah. But I love everything else. So my favorites are teaching hands-on science and math, because mm-hmm. I want all, especially girls, to get excited about science and math. But I'm also this, ama- like, I have such imagination and loved reading and writing growing up. Mm-hmm. I read so many books and then had a great writing instruction as a child in my public education in um, Houston. In a leaf, it was it was it was unsurmounted at the time. We had the most incredible curriculum. It's better than a lot of private schools at that time. So my writing is very strong. So I love teaching children writing. Um, I would read books like when I taught fourth grade here in town um, at a bilingual school. Yeah. These are I'm teaching them English. So I read The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe with oh, a British accent. The entire oh. book. <laughs> I read the entire book like I was Lucy Pevensey, and that's where I got my accents. I've gotten them from the Pevenseys, which are the Mm. children in line, which the wardrobe say I actually have a British accent. It's very, very strong. I've been using it since I was about 13 years old when I went to London the first time, Mm -hmm. and um, so I have a British accent, yes. And I do, I'm prolifically, I'm a Spanish speaker, so I'm bilingual um, since I was 12 years old as well. Where has she been all my life? (laughs) I know, love this woman. I knew you would. (laughs) I knew, I knew. I, you know. Real quick side note, this is part of the reason I wanted to do the podcast. I know so many outstanding, unbelievably remarkable, cool humans that don't have a platform or haven't had one yet or are about to be on one, which I think is Kathy. Mm -hmm. And I just want people to have, I want you to have a spotlight. And if I can help with that, if I can help turn the spotlight on you and let you have your Broadway moment, I want to do it. (laughs) Yes. Oh my gosh. Yes. That's awesome. You know? Like that makes me want to jump out of my chair. Yes. Well, that is, so the next thing Kathy's doing, so I had all the careers I wanted to do um, growing up. And the next one is to be a public speaker, motivator. Um, I want to encourage her, encourage and give people (laughs) hope and inspire. Those are all the things. So, Many a morning, including this morning, uh, I am addicted to TikTok. So when I say that, it can you can use Instagram, insert YouTube, whatever your medium is. Mine is TikTok. So in the mornings, I will go and to and I have an inspirational. I have folders on TikTok because it's organized. <laughs> I don't know anybody else who's organized their TikTok, but I love that you have you it. Do. I feel like I you're about say, to show me. That is, I, I'm just going to tell, real quick, I'm opening TikTok right now. Jeez. And there is a there is a woman on here just the other day that was telling everybody how to do this. But I'll just going to, my collections real quick. I have music melodies. So uh, I, I am a master, like not kind of, but master playlist maker. And I think Mandy can just like, I'm sure you appreciate it. For you can sure. appreciate it. You, you, you kill it. Like you're the mix master master, oh, but no. I definitely come along and can do it. Probably so much better. At oh, it my I playlisting am. is <laughs> I believe it. superior. I, I make them for it. the store. Yeah. They have to have a little bit of like a Nat King Cole, but then they need to have a 1990s. And then there's mm-hmm. of course got to be an eighties like Rick Astley or something like you got to mix them. Oh, I love to mix a good playlist. So I have mi- music melodies on here. And then I have, um, HSP, highly sensitive person, ADHD, and trauma. So there's a whole section for that. That's oh, me. I need that one. <laughs> um, habit forming, which is to encourage you to build new habits. Get fit, which are all the physical workout things I want to train on. Uh, be a beautiful boss. Shopping. So that's all that time. Everybody jumps on there from Amazon, tells you, you need to buy it all. Well, I got to put it somewhere and think about it later because I don't need to jump on Amazon right then. Right. Um, healthy tips. Clean up because you need to be clean and organized. And then just, what was the other one I was just talking about? Too? Brain Boost. I want to tell you all a little bit about Dr. Amen. So he has scanned 200,000 brains. He's been a psychiatrist for over 40 years. Some great information. So he inspired that one. And then there's one called Inspire Me. So, and then I have another one that's just Quote Me Up that'll just have great quotes. So I feel like you should just come back and maybe do a podcast on each of those collections. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Or we'll just have a TikTok podcast. We well, should. I mean, again, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah, that would be like, fun. Whatever, wherever, if you are going to so scroll, to I heard y'all about. talking about scrolling the other day, mm-hmm. mindful scrolling or something mm-hmm. like that. And the, it's, I am definitely, one of my parenting philosophies is, 
you know, have a bowl of candy in your house so that your kids aren't the ones running to every other house and going straight for their candy. Mm -hmm. Um, So I did that. We always had uh, bowls and dishes of candy in my house. I wanted it to be something they were numb to and not wanting every time they left the house. And I did that in all philosophies. So if my kids wanted to watch, I wasn't okay with the Hunger Games. I know it was very popular and a a ton of people just jumped on it. It's a horrible Mm -hmm. subject. We're all going to kill each other? other? I mean, yeah. Yeah. I really had a hard time with it. When you have two teenagers and a a four-year-old that couldn't be cuter and you're looking at these books and seeing Ugh. every child their age read them it was horrible I read them before I had kids and watched the movies and I was like yeah and then I had kids and I'm like what the hell <laughs> this yeah. so part terrible. of you wants to not let them read it no, yeah. so to hear my two cents all you well, mommies with young kiddos do they understand dystopia and satire as children probably not no yeah. you know but because the whole environment was going to jump in yeah. and right. drink all that kool-aid over there yeah then I knew what were they going to do when they left my house. Go watch it somewhere else. How were they, if they got on a phone at school, what were they going to watch? Yep. Mm-hmm. So a uh, wonderful wise lady, Lanelle Zanstra at Pine Cove years ago, where I used to go um, with my kids in the summer for camp, she shared more is caught than taught. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then sit and watch it with them. Yes. And not in a judgmental, this is the most horrible movie, don't ever do it. But more of a, wow, at the end. Wow, that was kind of, what did that make you think of? That what if that happened today? Or, mm-hmm. you know, see, then you ask these thought provoking questions. And I, I was telling y'all, my youngest wants to move to New York City. So now I just say things like, I wonder what that's going to be like when you live there. And she's doing the thought, she thinks Ed out and she already is picturing what's it going to be like. Mm-hmm. You know, that's going to be a different culture than what I've grown up here in Tyler. So I hope that I've taught my three children to have thought provoking moments about things everybody's saying is the most popular, wonderful gadget ever now. And to experience it and then say, hmm, what do I really think about that? Well, How does that line up with my morals? It turns them into a thoughtful consumer of life as opposed to just a mindless one. It, you know, it, rather than just, oh, everybody is watching Hunger Games and reading these books. Cool, I'll do it too. It turns into, okay, let me let me look at this and then what do I think about it? And mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. think about it as opposed to just consuming it. Yeah, That's what awesome. could I? What could I take away from it? Mm-hmm. Is any of this of good or value? Is it some way? Something I need to yeah <laughs> avoid right. in life to have this happen. Okay, <laughs> so noted. I'll put that in my little mommy notes. <laughs> <laughs> that one is. That one is. I love that. More is caught than taught. I've yeah. heard it said other ways, but that is the best way I've heard it. Absolutely. Said. I'll tell you, y'all. You're looking. The woman I am today, sitting in this chair. 85% made up from the last 23 years of parenting. Mm. They are standing right under your little feet or you know, right in front of you watching everything and catching mm-hmm. all of it. And um, they get the nuances, y'all, they do. They mm-hmm. may not know how to verbalize them when they're five, six, seven years old, um, but they are catching so, so, so much. So that's a point where you really do go in your closet and you do go to your faith if you have faith or whatever your thing is. For my, my, my brother's a big person in AA. That has just changed him and, and given him a great foundation in life. So you go to whatever that is for you. For me, it is my faith and, and God. And I go in the closet and talk to him a lot. Y'all remember <laughs> <laughs> talking to all the unseen, especially God. And it's reset from the heart of who I am because they are catching it mm-hmm. and you are not pulling anything over on them. You may, <laughs> that you know that whole little phrase about going to church on Sunday morning and you are screaming in the car and slamming the door and walking in and going, well, God bless everyone. Uh-huh. Um, lots of Sundays were like that. And they do see that. They heard every bit of that argument. They heard all the sarcasm between the two parents. They heard you talk about the financial situation that's going, whatever it was, they caught it all. Mm. And now we're going to walk in and, and, and pretend like everything's okay. So there's a, a moments of authenticity that are so incredibly important. So one other thing I did was at the end of their bed at night is the best time to do this. Linnell also taught me this. And you just go to the end of their bed at night once they're kind of tucked in. So, and you would be amazed at what pours out of them. Yep. Yep. And then you get to ask those framing questions mm-hmm. and point them. And then it's also the very sweetest time to apologize, which yes. is incredibly important as a parent and Powerful. very humble and teaches them to apologize in life and say, you know what? Today in the kitchen, when I just turned and snapped at you, it isn't okay just because it was three o'clock mm-hmm. and it was the bewitching hour and I needed to cook dinner. That didn't make it okay for me to talk to you like that. Right. I'm very sorry. And here's what else that does. That will build in a child the ability to extend grace, to extend forgiveness. And that kid is not going to wake up at 20 or 25 and go, <gasps> My world is falling apart. You mean my parents aren't perfect? You mean they don't know it all? No, because you have engaged in this back and forth from the time that they were little of, baby, 
mama is mama's not perfect mama makes mistakes all the time and today when I did that that was wrong and I'm sorry I mean that builds I'm always thinking like I have moments where I'm like okay lord that one's probably going to be talked about in the therapist's mm-hmm, office. I'm mm-hmm. really sorry. <laughs> <clears throat> yep. But, you know, just having – that's just so important. That's so important because I feel like we were raised by generations that didn't do that very well. Mm-hmm. Oh, not at all. You know, no. so good job again. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, so I have a, a 23-year-old son and a 20-year-old daughter and a 16-year-old daughter, and um, all have been introduced to the concept of counseling. Um, I won't tell you who goes, but some of them go. I took them um, the first time anyone would ever go to counseling with me. I was I even told them this, and another wise mother taught me this. I took them for me. I said, You're, I'm not, I'm not, which I did, of course. I did want them to learn the skill of counseling. But I took them in there to say, let's, but it's usually when they're a teenager, just so you all know. So I said, let's go in. And I want you to come to help me because I'm struggling. Mm. So you, they came in under, it wasn't a guise, but they came in for the first time to go to counseling so the counselor could be that mediator mm. and be that really neutral person that gets, you know, their voice. And they get they got to see, like, wow, that counselor person is totally just there to help the situation. They're not yeah. taking yeah. sides at all. And it builds all. trust in that process oh, so that what yes. they need it, they can lean into yes. it. Yeah. And then they can go by That's themselves beautiful. when they do hit the, the real things mm-hmm. of life, yeah. all the things. that That's Yeah, right. and my life had so so many of those things. But um, I did want to tell you, so when I was talking about wanting to, uh, I, I love this microphone. I don't know if we got to talk about that once we were recording. <laughs> I don't think but, so. Um, if it's talk missing, about your love for the yeah, microphone. I was going to say, if y'all are missing this one, um, <laughs> when you go home tonight, it's in my bedroom in front of a mirror, and I will be talking on it because I did. I can did. send you an Amazon link, Kathy. We can get one. <laughs> <laughs> I will never leave my house. <laughs> Woo. Hey, can I just podcast with y'all today via Via whatever you do on your kind of Bluetooth yeah. somehow and be, be on your podcast. We haven't I'm at done home it in, yet, my living, in my living room. We can figure it out. Um, so I was saying when I'm uh, probably eight years old, I have the round brush. You have to be a little bit older to really picture the old wooden round brush. And the round brush is perfectly a microphone. Mm, I, don't know yes. about y'all. I don't know what else you would have picked. But I have the microphone and I'm in front of my mom's big mirror at the end of her bed. And sometimes when I was still shorter, I would stand on the bed. And I was everything from Johnny, Cal- uh, what was his name? Carson. Johnny Carson. Johnny Carson. Mm-hmm. Johnny Carson all the way to Carol Burnett mm. and then just what would then become Oprah. I'm sure Oprah yeah. did a very similar thing to what I did. But I do all that and I was going to say um, I took that and my father was on the radio. So I had grown up and that's what we did. I went to my dad's work or mom's work were at radio stations. So to me, microphones and talking into them were just <laughs> Natural. the best thing yeah. ever. Yeah. So I will tell y'all the, the way I get to where I am in life is um, my mom loved baseball. So dad loves the radio and he got to see Elvis here in Tyler at the mm. Mayfair building in 1955. So he went down to Houston to be a disc jockey back then. He was the wild child, Paul Williams. And then mom grow, grew up in... In Milwaukee and she was a huge baseball fan and babysat for one of the famous pitchers for the Milwaukee Braves so I put the two together in seventh grade and looked around and saw there were only three female sportscasters at the time in 1983 or whatever it was so I decided from seventh grade until I graduated from college in 1991 that I was going to be a sportscaster mm. so and I made my minor Spanish so that's how I ended up being okay. a teacher all the years later but I I did all that and here's the irony of ironies and then I moved to Tyler Texas and taught for 20 years <laughs> <laughs> but what I was going to say is I, I, I'm going to melt them all together what Mandy was talking about I'm going to be a speaker mm. I was trying to figure out why it's so hard for me to write the book I'm writing a book and it's very hard for me to write it mechanically sit down at a laptop type it or write it physically because what my gifting is is speaking yeah and I developed it from the age of eight yeah. on and I have and, uh, I'm one of those people I would go to women of faith there'd be 60,000 people in that arena in Dallas, and I thought, oh, I wish they'd pick me. And you're thinking, what? They don't. What do they? They don't pick anybody, Kathy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I would be sitting there the whole time, going, "Pick me, pick me. Like, come, hand me the microphone. I'll come up on a stage in front Listen. of sixty thousand people, and oh, I will I talk can so right now." Relate to that. Oh, I can. So Could you relate. do that? Oh yeah. Oh, that was just. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. Oh my gosh. So anyway, so I that can relate is too. Yes, she has a oh, picture. Mandy has a picture of herself when she was little, holding a little I microphone. I wish I had one. Oh, that's so yeah. perfect. Yeah. That was... What are you four? Oh, maybe three, three, four. Yeah. Yes, that that mm-hmm. nailed yeah. it right yeah. here. That's that, but that was you. I get it. Yep. Like I that's understand. all three of us. We it's, all yes. do. That. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Literally. That is so to say. I'm going from sportscaster to teacher 
and mom too. And I do own and run a store now. That's just a side note. But two, I want to be a public speaker and I want to have that women of faith platform, whatever it looks like Mm. this in front of a microphone and podcasting Mm -hmm. or vlogging or whatever it looks like. I want to use my voice and I want to come in to any woman Especially, I do really well with those younger than myself. I tend to feel mentory, and it, it makes it makes for a good, re, a good. I don't know, back and forth for me. I, I guess because I taught all the years. But if I can reach out and speak to a younger woman and give that note of when she's a teacher, or how to forgive herself and give herself grace, or any of those kind of things, um, oh, that just makes it's like mixing the microphone and the wanting to speak and share uh, good words, and then pouring it into the heart of somebody who needs it. Such a powerful episode. In fact, so powerful. We had to split our conversation with Kathy (laughs) into two episodes. So that concludes part one. Come back next week for part two with Kathy, where we talk healthy habits. We get into her three pillars of mental, physical, and spiritual health. She talks about books that she's reading, habits that she's forming. It's a great episode. So much value. I know this one's been amazing, but there's so much more to come. So make sure you come back next week to the Celebrating Women podcast for more with Kathy Williams Bosley. The Celebrating Women podcast wants to hear from you. Find us on social media at facebook.com slash celebrating women podcast or on Instagram, search Celebrating Women Podcast. You can also email us a voice message to celebratingwomenpodcast at gmail.com. We would love to hear your story or the story of an incredible woman you know. Send it to celebratingwomenpodcast at gmail.com. The Celebrating Women Podcast has been presented by Hand and Stone Massage and Facial Spa in Tyler. Book your appointment today. Stop by the spa in Cumberland Shopping Center or online at handandstonetyler.com. The Celebrating Women podcast is created and hosted by Mandy Unkefer and Ashley Fisher. Thank you so much for listening and don't forget to subscribe to the Celebrating Women podcast. Hey guys, it's Mandy. Have you been struggling to lose those extra pounds? Oh, I know I have totally been there. An extra, you know, 15 to 20 pounds can totally creep up on you in perimenopause, or at least it has with me. And I think I found it early. I hope it's not happening to you. But if it is, I've got the solution. You can lose up to 15 pounds in eight days with an incredible product line that I found and I want to share with you. Get a custom product recommendation with a complimentary wellness screening in the show notes. Just click Zing with Mandy.